In this movie, we'll take a look at a handful of additional Pathfinder options that are a little bit obscure, but you might find them helpful. And so I'm going to start off by zooming in on this collection of shapes right here. And I'll go ahead and marquee them like so. And then notice here in the Pathfinder panel that we have a flyout menu in the upper right-hand corner. If you go ahead and click on it, you'll find, among other commands, this guy right there, Make Compound Shape. And if you go ahead and choose that command, then you will fuse your path outlines into a dynamic compound shape, which means that you can edit your shapes to any extent you like. So, for example, I'll just go ahead and double-click on any one of these guys in order to enter the isolation mode. At which point I can go ahead and select this ring, for example, and move it independently of the other two shapes. I can even change the way the shapes interact by alt-clicking or option-clicking on the Mac on any one of the shape mode icons. And so, for example, if I were to alt or option-click on the minus front icon, that second icon in the first row, I would end up subtracting the selected ring from the shapes behind it. At which point, if I'm happy with what I see, I can just go ahead and press the escape key in order to exit the isolation mode. All right, you also have the option of releasing your path outlines if you like. And you can do that by just clicking on any one of these paths in order to select the entire compound shape. Then return to that flyout menu icon and choose release compound shape, which is going to restore the independent path outlines complete with their original fills and strokes. All right, but let's say that's not what I want. I'll just go ahead and press Control-Z or Command-Z on the Mac to undo that change. Instead, what I want to do is expand these shapes to static path outlines. And you can do that by either returning to the flyout menu and choosing Expand Compound Shape, or even more handy, you've got this Expand button right here. And so if I go ahead and click on that, I'm going to end up expanding the path outlines. Notice I'm no longer seeing the ring which means that I now have static path outlines in the form, as I can see up here on the far left side of the control panel, of a compound path. And so that means if I start dragging any one of these path outlines around, I'm going to move them all at once because Illustrator sees them as a single path outline. If that's not what I want, if I want to break them up further, then I could go up to the object menu, choose compound path, and then choose release. At which point, now if I click off one of the paths and then drag this guy, for example, I can see that all three path outlines are now entirely independent. All right, now I want you to notice this command right here called Pathfinder Options. It allows you to subtly adjust the behavior of a few Pathfinder operations. And so to see how that works, I'll go ahead and scroll over to this guy right here. And I'll click on this big purple square. And then I'll drag it over like so while pressing the Shift and Alt keys. That would be Shift and Option on the Mac. And I'm going to go ahead and drop this guy right about there so that I end up duplicating the square and the two squares are aligned with each other horizontally. Now I'll go ahead and marquee the path outlines. And I want you to notice that we have anchor points here as well as here, up here at the top of the shapes. And we've got another pair at this location and right about there. And so notice, if I were to click on the Unite icon, I'm not Alt-clicking, I'm just clicking on it in order to create a static path outline, we end up keeping those anchor points right there along the top of the shape and down here at the bottom, these straight segments as well, even though, technically speaking, they're not really necessary. They're what's known as redundant points. If you don't want that, then just go ahead and press Control-Z or Command-Z on the Mac, and then return to that flyout menu icon and choose Pathfinder Options. And then turn on this checkbox right there, Remove Redundant Points, and click OK. And now notice, if I once again click on the Unite icon, that Illustrator ends up getting rid of those redundant points, both the ones up here at the top of the path outline, as well as these guys down here on the bottom horizontal segments. All right, now I'm going to move down to this Divide demo here. And I'll marquee the path outlines, and I'll click on Divide, which is the first icon in the second row. Now, as you may recall, that ends up delivering a group. And so I'm going to bust up these shapes by going up to the Object menu and choosing the Ungroup command. Or I could press Control-Shift-G or Command-Shift-G on the Mac. And now I'll click off the paths, and I'll drag them to different locations so that we can see that I have once again traced this negative space, to which I'll assign a default fill and stroke by pressing the D key just so that we can see it. All right, so let's say you don't want to trace the negative space 
Then, just for the sake of demonstration, I'll scroll over to these shapes right there and marquee them once again. And then I'll return to the flyout menu icon in the upper right corner of the Pathfinder panel and choose Pathfinder Options. And then I'll turn on this second checkbox, Divide and Outline will remove unpainted artwork, and click OK. And now notice if I click on the Divide icon, once again inside the Pathfinder panel, and press Control shift g or Command shift g on the Mac to ungroup the path outlines. Now if I drag this guy away and then marquee this area, I no longer have a path outline around that negative space. And so if you don't like ending up with these extra path outlines when working with Divide or Outline, then again, go ahead and choose Pathfinder Options and turn on this second checkbox. And that, folks, is how you work with the extra, pretty darn obscure, but sometimes useful Pathfinder options here inside Illustrator.